As far as I'm concerned, the most useful 25 minutes of my day. At the meeting this afternoon, I'm proposing to raise it. That's right. No, I'm proposing to Might I remind heads of departments that we have the head of departments meeting at 2.15 this afternoon in the Millington Drake Room. I've been talking with the headmaster of Winchester about the Eton-Winchester match, which, as you know, has taken place at Winchester at their request for several years now, because it's their festive day. They would now like to revert to the old system, whereby we play home and away on alternative years. Talking of home and away, uh, the headmaster's conference is in Aberdeen this year. <laughs> and I shall be away on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. As far as the boys are concerned, they know that there is one moment in the day, too, when they can find any master with whom they have, may have a moment of business. And if they gather on the pavement outside School Hall, he will come through those doors uh, very, very, very quickly. So it's a very useful thing for boys as well. Uh, the boys, I'm told, believe that the masters have a sybaritic time in chambers, either drinking port or sherry. I'm afraid that that's absolutely untrue. It's all much more mundane. The masters simply circulate around, and uh, by long tradition, if you want to speak to a master, you grab the sleeve of his gown, which, as it were, establishes your place in the queue. And occasionally, of course, you'll see one master with somebody holding onto his gown and somebody else holding onto the gown of the other master. Rather quaint. There's a list of names, sir. And the money box with the most money. Yes, yeah, so all right. Good man. I know, I know, Chris. I know, Chris. Um, we got an interview with Dr. Boyd, um, the school psychologist. Yeah. And have you heard anything from the head man? Um, no, not yet. I have had that. No, I imagine he'll probably write back to you. Okay, and what do we do about getting people to type out the, um... <laughs> well, last going, half, yeah, okay. last half we had someone on the job all the time, um, and we actually paid them to do it as well. Right. Uh, but the terms, the terms are negotiable, okay? Um, I think James Hall knows how to use one of the word processors. You could ask him. Is it JOK? You said in your letter. Are they being taken down? Who took them down? Here's a headman. No, I think they're fine. But how many did you have up? I saw quite a few up. I had six up here. Guilford was looking here for about 15 minutes trying to rip them They probably enjoyed it. Depends what sort of thing you're into, I guess. Do you think they'll take them all down? If the headman is in, will they take them all down? I don't know. I'll talk to them about it maybe. And that represents adultery about to happen. Now, the implication there is, is it wrong heterosexual sex? When you come to this side, you get the alternative, which is effeminacy of varying kinds. So you have the castrato singer, a eunuch, uh, singing away to the accompaniment. It looks like there's trouble over Tom Spedstis. Somebody's been taking them down, and he's now on the bill for it. That means he's got to go and see the headmaster. The beauty of a boy's voice and the power of a man.
chapel has always been important at Eton. Indeed, when Henry VI founded the school, the chapel was every bit as much in his mind as the provision of education for the 70 scholars he was going to train to become leaders in church and state. It's still important today. I won't for one minute pretend that all Etonians are godly any more than other young people. Some are, some are fairly hostile to religion. The vast majority are prepared to be persuaded. Remembrance Sunday is a big occasion at Eton. It's one of those occasions where the whole community comes together. Going down in the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Well, that's a whole lot, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, why is number five Come on, mate, let's go! Got the number. What number are you, Sunshine? Six. Six. Sign the six in. Who's number five? OK, listen in. When I give you go, what I want you to do is I want you to go in between the Land Rover and this blue van here, touch the wall to the rear over there, and I want you formed up or as you were stood on your chair in the classroom, you know where that is. Last person, 20 press ups. Stand by. I'm touching that wall first. Go! Where are you going? Come on, move it. Let's go. Don't fucking go and prove yourself, you. You make it. Come on, let's go. Come on, you should have already got it. I think you're winning. I'm leaving. Wait, wait, wait. Who's waiting? So let's go. Get ready. The rain. Don't stop. Guys, go. Come on, we slow down. Come on, we slow down. Three. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Right. One, two, three, one. Don't smile. It's not funny. It's pathetic. People think there's an Eton type, but that's not really true. There's two types of Etonian, if anything. There's the sort of meathead macho sport guy who goes to TAP and joins the cadet force. And there's the arty type who wouldn't be seen dead on the playing field. And of course, some people are a combination of both, but not me. 
like the wash. And that didn't work. No. Well, I like the wash when you have that blue wash. No, but morning. the blue was too blue, I think. OK. And but then I've tried the plain white, and that didn't work. So I'm just seeing what the plaster looks like. And if yes. I don't do that, I might move from a blue on the outside into a brown. It's all right. It's going to well, what do you think, texture or white? You know, I, think, I think you need I texture need... of some kind. Cold. Oh, oh, a cold colour to emphasise the warmth of this. Right. Okay. What do you mean by putting up a poster like that? Do you actually think that's the right thing to do? Um. Not really. I know. I, I know it's bad, and I know it's wrong of me because I broke schools and stuff. And um, but it was really the only way of getting attention for the magazine. And is your magazine going to be similar to the poster that you put up? No, not at all. Well, aren't you then uh, uh, guilty of nothing else of uh, false pretenses and trying to pretend to the school you're publishing a magazine advertised by nudes? Um, the only way to get people to subscribe is to put out a risque advertising campaign. And really... It's simply quite unacceptable. You've plastered this all over every public place in Eton. It's uh, a poster described to me by various people, people as uh, obscene or pornographic. And even if it's not that, it's certainly in very poor taste. You've broken innumerable school rules in putting up your poster. What I'm more worried about, and I think this probably means the end of the arts review, what I'm more worried about is that you don't seem to acknowledge that that poster was unacceptable. You merely say that you think, for some reason, that it would in inspire more people to subscribe. And it doesn't seem to me that you in the least mind about it. I know we do. When he was in it, we just did it to get people to notice it, so they knew that it was going to be a different type of magazine. We didn't foresee that so many people would be offended. Because, I mean, it's not pornographic. And... Yes, so. <laughs> it's pornographic or not, it's absolutely unacceptable, isn't it? I know, it's that. Un yeah. We, we were wrong to, I mean, we have... I mean, I'm not claiming that we're... I'm not trying to justify myself. We did... We did wrong. I mean, we... We committed something that we weren't allowed to do. Well, in... Is there any reason, do you think, why the Arts Review should continue? So we can redeem ourselves, I suppose. Well, I think that's, that's, quite, a, that's quite a good answer. I tell you what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to give you some chores to do for the various school rules that you've broken. I'm going to accept, slightly against my better judgment, that uh, this is a mistake you're not going to repeat. But I am going to say this, that uh, this first edition of the Arts Review is the Arts Review on probation. And if it's not, as good uh, an addition as it ought to be, and in particular if you step out of line in any silly way, then I think you can take it that that is unfortunately the end of the arts review. Dear Headmaster, I would just like to apologise for my advertising campaign for the Arts Review. I spoke with the Lerma Australia today and we both agreed that it was not only wrong on my part, but a pretty stupid thing to do anyway, considering the timing of it. I had not realised that people would actually be offended by my posters, and so I was very naive not to foresee that. Tom, what happened with the headmaster? He showed it to me. Quite frankly, he, no, he flashed it up and he said, so by this poster, do I take it that your magazine's going to be pornographic? <laughs> <laughs> did he say, why did you do it, Tom? Yeah. Is he saying it's not, if it's not good enough? Yeah, he said we're on probation. Because... On mm. probation? Yeah. Um, I suppose... Um, well, he's really going to be... So you're going to have to be good and sort of censor any word that's... Uh... Yeah, but I know, we got an article on... Are you the perfect lover? Which I don't. <laughs> oh, God. Which, I'm not writing that, but it's going to be one of those. If you, you scored from line. if you scored from naught to thirty, <laughs> please count yourself a dead loss. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else to be said. Toko ni ikimasu ka? Kyoto no shisha ni ikimasu. Hmm. Hitori de ikimasu ka? Kashi no hito to ikimasu. Osaka ni mo ikimasen. Isaka. Osaka ni mo ikimas ka. Возвращение на родину по-прежнему остается неизбыточной мечтой для многих тысяч азиатских рабочих. Многие из них оказались в палаточных лагерях в Иорданской пустыне, где ситуация с каждым днем осложняется. Okay, anything there? Obviously, you can see what it's about. When he says you're not Zaliva, um. 
um, that means the zone of the gulf, but yeah. sometimes you call it Zialiv. So what is the actual word? Is it Zialiv? No, the word is Zaliv. That's the nominative. That is the genitive case, because Russian, as you know, is an inflected language. So this is the zone of the gulf. So if you hear a familiar word with an unfamiliar ending, now you know why it changes. It's because it's in a different case. OK, let's go on then. Dalsh. I'm a bit of a lefty, and in Eton that's a fairly rare thing, although I think the, the left-wing component is, is growing slightly. People regard me as a bit of a, a, bit of a maverick here. I, I set up a, recently a society called the Discussion Forum. We have a number of current affairs societies here which invite a speaker down to give a lecture and then answer questions. And the special thing about the Discussion Forum is that it invites three or four experts in a particular field. Um, I'm arranging one at the moment on the Gulf crisis. I really enjoy it because I'm interested in current affairs and uh, I, I just like the, the fun of organising something like this and of chairing it. I suppose I'm a bit of a megalomaniac. Hello, my name's Piers Torday and I'd like to welcome you to the 11th edition of the Eton News. You've bought the badges, seen the posters, read the news, heard the news... Oh. Sorry, sorry. Right, last one, hopefully. Hopefully. Until we get across the road. Hello, my name's Piers Torday, and I'd like to welcome you to the 11th edition of the Eton News. You've bought the badges, seen the posters, read the newspapers, heard the news, the Gulf crisis, Saddam Hussein, Iraq, Kuwait. But what exactly is it all about? In mid-September, a number of people involved met at the discussion forum to consider the crisis. We took our cameras along, hoping for an exclusive. Tonight's speakers are Sheikh Mohammed Al Sabah of Kuwait, who is at the moment uh, based at the, the embassy in London. Sir John Mobley, former ambassador to Iraq and uh, to Jordan, who was a, he was also a uh, political officer in Kuwait in the 50s. He currently works at the Royal Institute of International Relations. Dr. Peter Sluglet is lecturer in modern Middle Eastern history at Durham University. And Mr. Afif Safia is PLO representative in the United Kingdom. Uh, he's just joined it us. It does sometimes strike me that, you know, we are a privileged place and we do get a lot of special things that, that people in, in other schools around the country can't get. I mean, not only because uh, of, of merit, but also because of parental wealth. I have problems with that. I'm not sure whether it's, whether it's totally morally right. If I could address Mr. Sophia, I see that the uh, situation in Palestine, Palestine that doesn't exist, is similar to the one in Kuwait. And I agree that the West shouldn't have a set of double standards. But I can't see that it has any direct bearing on the Kuwaiti crisis. We should provide some way out, because otherwise, in the light of Vietnam, fighting it out may seem an attractive proposition. Well, I think that it is important that we should we pursue keep all his possible diplomatic and then no, no, to edit his answer. Okay, fine. I think we have to. And, and we do have to remain firm on we one thing. Also chop down that. <laughs> Does it start off as if it's the beginning of the answer? No. Well, it, 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 yes, it, it can. Yes, I think it does. We should provide some way out, because otherwise, in the light of Vietnam. It's actually rather a good position. point to cut in, because it answers the question as well. Well, I, I missed you at Chambers uh, yesterday, and I tried to catch you last night, but I didn't think I you were... I can hardly, there. frankly, bear the look at you, because you've been so slack and idle. Yes. I mean, I, I just... Uh, you're miles behind with your work, aren't you? Yes. 
I've well, got you've got a terrible lot of catching up to do. Have I had your notes? Um, those are the, the notes are there. I mean, I realise you've got other things to do, but honestly, we must keep up with it. Yeah, and I'm cutting down on everything else because I, I just neglected that, I realise. All right, all right. So, um, do you think I could have a, a, one more extension on my essay until tonight? Because oh, yeah. I'm, I'm halfway through it and I've done all the notes. I've done all the notes we have to do for today. Have and, it by you know, lock up tomorrow yeah, without fail. We'll have it by lock up tonight, so. Right, all right. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, the typical thing of about the posters they put up. The editors would also like to apologise for any offence caused by their recent advertising campaign, which was both flamboyant and mistimed. Whatever that means. It was mistimed because you were here. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> quite it wasn't a senior boy in pop was, um, wants to write an article about AIDS. He was given the go-ahead as long as he didn't mention sex no, or condoms. He wrote, it. he wrote it and then the words like condoms were taken out. He wasn't allowed to talk about sex. Because Eden boys don't have sex. Eden boys do not have sex. Yeah, obviously. Even in the holidays. It's something we don't think about. Yeah. Not living with girls, you don't. You, you only see one side of anything, you and I'm sure it can hinder your sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. You're conditioned against girls, but then I don't know if you back away from that it, towards homosexuality, then you're even further pushed yeah. back into you know you're sort of crushed in the middle, and the you know, the thing against homosexuality is so much stronger than anything else in this you, school. Like, you go to you go to an away match or something, and you know you have communal showers. And all the guys from Stowe or something, they all, you know, get in the communal showers and they have a shower, and all the guys from Eaton sort of standing on the corner with their rugby shorts on going, ah. Oh. It means you, there's a massive hang-up about nudity. Yeah. I mean... Which most other schools don't Which have, most yeah. other schools don't have. Coming back after my first holidays, I wasn't looking forward to the kind of first few days, getting sorted out back into the routine and waking up at half past seven. But when that's over, it's really good fun, and you just think, what would I be doing if I was at home? It would be very boring. It's the Times and Express. Hi, Alex. Hi. Yeah, 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 I've got it. I am delighted to be once again at Eton, this time to celebrate with you an anniversary so notable that not even the most frivolous Etonian could let it pass without paying it due deference. But I dare say that you Etonians will be thinking less of those who have gone before you than of the present and future. It has always seemed to me that one of the virtues of Eaton's system is its determination never to patronize youth nor to underestimate its capacity for invention and imagination. Because those qualities are given full reign here, the rituals can acquire a meaning and the regimentation a soul. I still think being here is too far removed from the outside world. I wouldn't send my son here. But then that's what my father said 25 years ago. American Embassy Press Office. Yeah. Right. Um, I'd like to find out uh, uh, an address. Hello, I wonder if you have uh, an address. At